Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to give you an update on my game Project S. I'll be talking about all of the ways I've tried to build a combat system and what my experience was like hiring another developer through Fiverr. I hope this video is useful to anyone considering using Fiverr for the development side of their game. With that being said, let's jump in. In my last video I showcased more of the world design and talked about the story in my game. In case you missed it, Project S is about a boy who gets lost in a forgotten world and meets a spirit guide. The spirit guide takes the form of a fox and helps the boy throughout the game with the goal of getting him back to his own world. One of the biggest challenges I've faced while working on this game has been centered around the combat system. So much goes into the combat we see in modern games and trying to keep up with today's standards can be complicated. Hit reactions, health systems, enemy AI, damage output, the list goes on. I was definitely overambitious at first when I was making the combat for my game. Throughout this year I have taken several different approaches for making a combat system. I've tried building one from scratch, using assets from the Unreal Marketplace, hiring a freelance developer, and using Fiverr. Each approach has its pros and cons, and what ultimately helped push me in the right direction was recognizing my own strengths and weaknesses as a game dev. So let's talk about making the combat from scratch. With the experience I gained from working on previous games, I was able to get started building a combat system on my own. This was a very basic setup in which the player could switch from having no sword to using a sword and hit the enemy. The enemy utilized a simple AI component that allowed them to follow the player and essentially run into the player to hurt them. If the player hit the enemy, the enemy would be destroyed. If the enemy hit the player, the level would restart. The upside to building my own system was that I knew the ins and outs of how the combat worked and how it was integrated into my game. The downside was that the system was too simple and ultimately not fun. In an attempt to make the combat more complex and enjoyable, I tried various tutorials and two different Udemy courses. The tutorials on YouTube were somewhat helpful but didn't have enough info to make a complete system. The two Udemy courses I took were only useful if you wanted to make exactly what the teacher of the course was making. Alright, so here was my experience with using the Unreal Marketplace. If you're an indie dev who uses Unreal Engine, then you're likely familiar with the Unreal Marketplace. The Marketplace is a great way to find all types of resources for your game. From animations, to models, to systems, these assets can save you hours of time on your project. A benefit to using a combat system from the Unreal Marketplace is that all of the heavy lifting is done for you. With that being said, most blueprint systems are rarely plug and play. They often require sifting through multiple tutorial videos, reading lots of documentation, or joining a Discord server for troubleshooting. And while it's great that these authors of these assets provide so many ways to learn about their product, it can be overwhelming to think about the time required to integrate one of these assets into your game. There were two assets in particular that I was targeting as potential solutions for my game. After looking through several tutorial videos for one of the products, I knew it wasn't for me because of the amount of time it took to get your character up and running. I tried the other product I was interested in, but after following the tutorials step by step, I ran into a lot of bugs and felt it wasn't worth the effort to troubleshoot. Alright, let's talk about when I first hired a freelance developer. When it came to hiring another dev, I wanted to initially avoid platforms like Fiverr. When it comes to programming anything, games, websites, apps, there's an ongoing relationship between the developer and the client that is necessary for the success of the project. Because of all of the bugs that will occur over the life of a project, I needed a developer that I could continue to work with. I didn't like the idea of paying someone to build me a system where I was only allowed a couple of revisions and then I would never hear from them again. So because of that I decided to explore other options and try to find a contractor. I met a developer by posting a wanted ad in a Discord server that I had been a part of for a while. This dev seemed like he had the experience I was looking for, and I really liked his portfolio. Long story short, he ghosted me after several months of working with me, and I lost the money that I paid him. The only thing that I got out of it was a demo from the first month of work which I couldn't use as it wasn't the actual UE project file. While I'm disappointed in this experience, it's a valuable lesson learned and didn't stop me from moving forward with my game. Okay, now moving on to hiring a developer from Fiverr. So we've all seen the Fiverr videos on YouTube, right? You know the ones I'm talking about. I paid someone on Fiverr X amount of dollars to make me something. I've seen a lot of these videos, especially ones about hiring someone to make a game. While these videos are entertaining, they didn't alleviate my concerns I had about using Fiverr. 
However, I had used Fiverr in the past for other projects unrelated to development, and it was a good experience. The biggest benefit to me is that Fiverr acts as a third party to protect your money and hold the freelancer accountable. So I began my search on the website and I found a developer that had great reviews and seemed like they could build the combat system I was envisioning. They were also a part of Fiverr's Pro program. This is where you pay more money but are insured to be hiring someone that knows what they're doing. I reached out to the dev and we scheduled a call together. During our call, this developer seemed very confident with all of the ideas I was throwing at him. So much to the point that I actually remade my game design document because this guy had more experience than my previous developer. Remaking my game design document was so much fun. I felt like I didn't have many limitations and I could just come up with ideas and direct how these ideas would be implemented into the combat. So I sent off the document and waited a month for this dev to provide me with a project. Then the day came to review my project. Because of the money I had spent and my relationship with the previous contractor I had, I was very nervous when I received the project. To my surprise though, the first draft was really good, but it was lacking some of the items that I had included in my game design document. One of the things the project was missing was that the developer didn't use the animations I had included in the project, or the model I had included. Part of this was my fault, as I didn't explicitly tell the dev to use these animations and just assumed he would use them if I included them in the file. But he didn't use the model I included because I placed the wrong model in the file. The one in the project was not rigged properly for the UE4 mannequin. Again, that's my fault, but had I been working with a dev that I could communicate with through the life of the project, this issue may have been resolved on day one instead of day 30. After some back and forth and making it more clear what I was looking for, the dev reworked the project and it was looking a lot better. There were still some tweaks needed and we had another round of revisions. And after the third round, I was satisfied with the project. The dev and I had a follow-up meeting where he went over the system he built and how to modify some of the attributes. Having worked with this system for a couple weeks now, I have encountered some bugs. There is one bug in particular that's game breaking and I'm not sure how to fix it. While this is disappointing, as a developer myself, I totally understand it and expect there to be bugs. My experience using Fiverr was more positive than negative. The dev who helped me really knew what he was doing and built the system in a way that was easy to understand and tweak. He took my ideas that I didn't know how to program and brought them to life. I am incredibly grateful for all of the effort he put into this project and I will be working with him in the future to add more to Project S. Okay, now for the fun part, the new combat system. As I mentioned previously, in Project S there is a fox that guides you throughout the game. This fox is your primary helper and is the key to getting back home to your own world. With the fox being your helper, he is also your weapon. You can switch the spirit guide from his fox form to his sword form in combat. While in his sword form, you'll use your guide to fight off enemies in this forgotten world. You also have a special attack gauge that once it's fully charged, you can launch an area attack that will damage multiple enemies at the same time. There are no potions or healing agents in this game. If you begin to lose health while in combat, you can switch your spirit guide from his sword form back to his fox form and he will replenish your health. If you happen to be defeated in combat, you will spawn at the beginning of the most recent level you're in. There are many different enemies that have been added to my game. Some of the low level enemies melee attack the character, while there are other enemies that use ranged attacks. Right now there are four bosses in the game and each boss has something unique about them when in combat. Take for example this tree boss. He will only take damage when performing a certain animation, and he only performs that animation if he fails to hit you a certain amount of times. So what are the next steps for Project S? As of right now, I don't plan on adding much more to the game as I want to get it ready for its early access state. I have a lot of refining to do with the levels and combat and that will be what I focus on next. After that, I plan to add music, sound effects, and overhaul the UI in the game. I also need to build out a pause menu and start screen and potentially integrate a loading system into the game. Then I need to build my Steam page, work on the cover art, and make a teaser trailer. I'm excited to move forward with this game and see what the future holds for Project S. I don't yet have a release date in mind because I really want to focus on getting this game to be something fun, beautiful, and immersive. Alright, well that wraps up this devlog. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe for updates about Project S and more Unreal Engine content. Thanks again everyone and I'll catch you later.